I think it's a fact that we are facing now the sixth great extinction. And depending on which statistics you believe, this could be the greatest one the Earth has seen. Everywhere you see around the world, uh, habitat destruction continues apace. We don't know, the really important thing is, we don't know what this is going to do, because other extinctions have not been like this one. They haven't been wholesale removal of habitats because of the activities of one species. The previous great extinctions have been the result of often external disasters, a meteorite impact, huge desertification, but never before have we had one where one species has done for so many others. This juniper is the image of survival. It lives alone in the middle of an infertile land while it follows the desert in its unstoppable advance. We're in the foothills of the Doñana wetlands in the south of Spain. In the bordering pine forests, the sand is invading this territory. New environmental conditions have eliminated many species. Insects, birds, and small mammals disappear since there are no trees and the water is becoming scarce. Nature, however, doesn't give in. Although limited to just a little more than these juniper branches advancing with the dunes, life continues tenaciously forward. The Earth's climate has suffered successive changes, which has determined the number and variety of species in each period. The concept of biodiversity specifically refers to the richness of life in a determined time and space. It's a calculation that measures the variety of species, keeping in mind that those species are capable of reproducing among themselves. There is little difference between insects, plants, and mammals, because every living being counts and not only because it is alive, but because life also depends on it. The number of species that exist today is unknown. There are about two million classified, although no one really knows the percentage that this figure represents with respect to the total number of species inhabiting the Earth. Scientists do not agree on the approximations, because some believe that there are at least four million species, while others, who are more optimistic, estimate that there are more than 100 million. Between the two extremes, the most accepted figure is around 14 million different living beings. The small dark coleopterans, the common beetle, are the monarchs in the kingdom of the high figures of biodiversity. They form the most numerous group of all insects, while at the same time are the living beings most capable of proliferating on Earth.
centuries ago, the Egyptians chose the beetle as the symbol of what never dies. Today, scientific investigation confirms this intuition. The current inventory of beetles reaches a total of 350,000 species. This animal has made more variations to itself than any other species, which without a doubt is a way of guaranteeing eternity. The predominance and diversity of what is small is not a whim of nature. They correspond to a need. Without insects, the delicate machinery of life would not work. They rid the ecosystems of biological remains. They oxygenate the soil and serve as food for hundreds of species of birds, reptiles, and mammals. But most of all, they are essential for plants, whose reproduction depends almost exclusively on the millions of insects that transfer the pollen from one flower to another. As the size of the species decreases, the task it carries out becomes more important. This is the case of bacteria. With such microscopic dimensions, these organisms carry out the hardest cleaning job of recycling dead animal and plant waste, which are returned to the ecosystem as a valuable nutritious material. In more general terms, bacteria are adapted to consume chemical elements like nitrogen, phosphorus, and carbon, which are essential for many beings. This explains why large armies of bacteria invade all living areas of the planet. Just a handful of soil can hold up to 10 billion of these organisms. The contribution of bacteria was also the key in the way life was accepted on Earth. They were the trigger so that the atmosphere could begin to circulate oxygen freely. Up until that moment, no living being needed it to exist. In the early history of the planet, there was very little free oxygen in the atmosphere. So most of the organisms, bacteria particularly, were adapted to metabolize, to grow and reproduce in the absence of oxygen. Now, at some point, certainly more than 2,500 million years ago, and possibly as much as 3,500 million years ago, the first photosynthetic bacteria blue-green bacteria and other organisms released oxygen into the atmosphere. Initially, of course, this would have been poison to all those creatures that were used to living in the absence of oxygen. So if you want to put it like that, yes, originally oxygen was a pollutant. But of course, it became, as it gradually built up in concentration, absolutely vital, literally vital, to the evolution of animals, because animals use oxygen to breathe. So a pollutant, in one sense, became the necessity for life further advancement. The abundance of oxygen favors the appearance of organisms with new characteristics. During the early stages, the Earth was dominated by single-cell beings, but due to the revolution of oxygen, multicellular individuals began to spread throughout the planet. These beings caused major changes in the methods of reproduction. If the single-cell being created its descendants by duplicating itself or by dividing itself, these new organisms, on the other hand, invented sexual reproduction. Two individuals came together to produce a third, or several others, which are not the same as the parents. 